Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Thursday, October 12th, 2023. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you're part of my life as well. Well, uh, today is Christy Russell's birthday. Happy birthday, Christy. God bless you. We're so glad that you're part of our fellowship. Uh, you have been all your life, actually. So that's great and awesome. And uh, we love you. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, pray that God blesses you in every way today, that you're surrounded by the love of your family and friends, and you know that you're loved by your church as well as by your Jesus. Um, we have our youth group tonight at 6.30 p.m. Uh, meeting here at the church uh, for our young, our youth from middle school and high school age kids coming out for that. Yeah, so on Sunday, I preached out of 2 Thessalonians chapters 1 and 2. I'm talking about uh, the day of the Lord and, uh, and the Antichrist. And this is part of our sermon series called Preparing for the End, Sermons Exploring the End Times. We started this series back in August. We're going all the way to November. And uh, we're talking about the return of Christ now at, in 2 Thessalonians. And we're talking about the Antichrist. And um, the Apostle Paul in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is concerned that the Thessalonians have been believing something that they should already know is not true. He says this, um, Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Uh, we're talking about the day of the Lord here, the return of Christ, and uh, the Apostle Paul is concerned that they might be believing something that's been uh, communicated to them. And he has uh, three different options uh, uh, that might be shaking them. One is a spirit, uh, some sort of uh, angel or, or spiritual visitor, uh, or a spoken word that's it's sort of uh, human teaching, right? Or a letter seeming to be from Paul himself uh, saying that the day of the Lord has come. He says, don't be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed by this kind of thing. He says, because as he goes on in verse three, he says, because I've, I've already taught you and Jesus already taught you when the day of the Lord would take place. So you shouldn't uh, be shaken by this new teaching. And the, here, here, this is key important uh, advice, not just for the Thessalonians, but also for us as well. We are living in an age when people are teaching false things all the time, and we have access to them through their teaching on YouTube. One of the you know, great things about YouTube is you can hear some of the best preaching available in the world on YouTube today, uh, not just even current preachers, but, but from the past as well, as, as uh, past films and videos are put online. Um, but we also are inundated with awful, awful preaching and teaching. Uh, people who, anybody who has a YouTube channel and can, you know, put up a fancy schmancy background behind them, uh, and can sound very insistent for 10 minutes, uh, can, can generate a really great following. Um, you know, that's a danger even in what I'm doing here, right? I, I I'm recording these daily devotional videos, but... You know, you shouldn't think that just because I'm on YouTube, just because I'm a pastor of a church in Poughkeepsie, New York, just because uh, I sound like I know what I'm talking about, that what I'm saying really is true. Uh, don't believe me, right? Unless what I say lines up with the teaching of Scripture. Don't believe me. Don't believe an angel uh, seeming to come from heaven uh, if what they say doesn't line up with scripture. Don't believe what anybody tells you is true about God or the things of God unless it lines up with scripture. This is something that Paul says again and again. Here's in Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 through 9. I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preached to you, let him be accursed. As we've said before, now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. 
there is a true gospel. It's the story about Jesus who came into the world as the fulfillment of prophecy, who died, who lived a sinless life, who died on the cross for our sins, who on the third day was raised to life again, who is now seated at the right hand of God the Father and will return to judge the living and the dead. <clears throat> this is the gospel, that anyone who believes in him through faith because of his grace is saved. And uh, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ and how we respond to it. And anyone who preaches something different, even if they are the best preacher on earth with the most eloquent words, even if they have you know, tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people following them on YouTube, millions of people following them on YouTube, even if it's a supernatural being preaching to you, even if it, it claims to come with signs and wonders, it don't matter if it doesn't accord with the true gospel of Jesus Christ as taught in in the Bible, right? This is our standard for spiritual truth. This is where God reveals his uh, plan for humanity. This is where uh, we learn about how who God is and, and how we can be saved. We learn about our problem of sin and death. We learn that uh, only through Jesus can we be saved. If it doesn't line up with this gospel, it's not true. And it doesn't matter who preaches it to you. Even if the person who preached to you the true gospel starts to preach something different, don't follow them into the something different. Stick with the true gospel that's been preached to you. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the one true King and Lord and Savior over all the world. Um, just don't believe it if it changes to something else. You know, and it might feel like, okay, well, what, what do you mean false gospels? What about what, what? What kinds of false gospels are there? There are there are people who are out there who are preaching that uh, that God wants you to always be healthy, wealthy, and wise. That sickness that. Uh, calamity happening in your life is signs that you're not actually following God, that, that somehow there's this magical protection that's around you that keeps you from experiencing harm if you have enough faith. These are, these are teachings that take certain verses of the Bible out of context. Um, it sounds like it's biblical teaching when they make it, but then you, then you look at the big picture, you step back and you look, okay, well, what does this say from beginning to end? Does this book tell, uh, tell the story of anyone with perfect faith, perfect love, perfect truth, who did not experience calamity in their lives? Well, no, it tells the, tells the story of lots of people who were not perfect, who God nevertheless accepted through Christ. Oh, and it does tell the story of one person who had, uh, who was perfectly righteous and had faith perfectly from the beginning of their life to the end. And that person was crucified on a cross. That person was betrayed. That person was unjustly accused and crucified. Uh, the Bible doesn't say that if you are perfectly faithful and perfectly true, that nothing bad will ever happen to you. Even if some individual verses might seem to say that, the, the overall story tells a different, it paints a different picture. And there are passages after passages after passages that contradict uh, that simplistic understanding of, of faith and suffering. That's one false gospel. There are false gospels out there that preach that Jesus isn't the eternal son of God, but that Jesus was a good and righteous man who was elevated to the uh, status of sonship. He was adopted by God as God's son, uh, rather than being the pre-existent uh, heavenly God the, God the son who existed uh, before all time. Uh, that's a false gospel because the Bible teaches something different. There are some who believe that, uh, that uh, all sorts of strange things about Jesus. The Jesus that you and I can become gods if we, uh, 
if we have enough faith, if we believe in ourselves enough, we can become gods. I've been listening to, uh, not uh, because for my own spiritual edification, but because uh, I have friends who are going down these paths, listening to different YouTube preachers who preach these things, and they're saying uh, things that paint God to be a monster, that paint uh, Jesus to uh, be in conflict with God the Father because God the Father is evil and Jesus is good. And, and it's fake. It sounds persuasive. It sounds slick. They've got cool sets and the background and their camera is good and their audio quality is great. But, but it doesn't line up with what's in the scriptures. And, and what Jesus preached to us and what Paul and Peter preached to us in the scriptures, this is, this, this is the gospel by which we are saved. So we must not abandon it for uh, what tickles our itching ears. Even if it's a, an angel from heaven that preaches it, even if it's someone who was previously trustworthy who preaches it, if it doesn't line up with the scriptures, we must not follow it. And I think that's why it's important for us to understand and know the scriptures. That's why I teach the scriptures uh, passage by passage. It's why I try to give the big picture of the scriptures so you can see how it all fits together so that when you see a piece that doesn't seem to fit in there, uh, you have your early warning system goes off. And the, the, when the warning light goes off, you say, wait, I'm, I'm going to be careful with this because this doesn't seem like it's right. But, you know, have that same scrutiny for me. Skepticism, right? Don't believe everything that's been said to you. Uh, be skeptical, but don't be cynical. Believe Jesus. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that in your love for us, you do give us the true gospel of Jesus Christ in the scriptures. Lord, help us to cling to you through your word. Send your Holy Spirit to help us discern the difference between truth and error. Even if the error is presented with slick words and production values, even if it's accompanied by miraculous signs, may we not believe it if it's not the truth about Jesus. Help us, Lord, to have discernment. Lord, I pray for uh, everyone in the sound of my voice that they would lean on you and on your word. Lord, I lift up Marcy Clark today on her birthday. Please bless her in every way. May she know that she is loved by you and by your people. And Lord, I pray for our um, youth group tonight. That was my, not Marcy Clark, it was yesterday. Christy Russell is today. I continue to pray for Marcy Clark, but also for Christy Russell today on her birthday. May she know that she's loved by you and by your people. And Lord, I pray for our uh, youth group tonight. May they be blessed as they gather together for a good time in your word and with each other. Lord, we love you and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.